Hey y'all, so this is the second homework problem and uh, I drew out the different pressures and the different qualities that the statement is giving you but you're to consider an ideal regenerative re Rankine cycle and steam is entering the turbine at 10 megapascal and the turbine it's bleeding off at two points the first bleed there's this parameter y that represents the fraction of steam coming in at 8 that's being bled through stream 9 and the steam is being bled at a pressure of 1.2 megapascal before it's um, sent into a closed feed water heater and at this point it flows through it gives up its latent heat and all of the steam that passes through the closed feed water heater is condensed so the quality at 0.6 is equal to zero so we're right at the, the condensation uh, right at a quality of zero so just after the last bubble uh, condenses at the end of this feed water heater at this point the pressure at 6 is going to be the same as the pressure at 9, essentially the same. There's very little pressure drop across a closed feed water heater. It's just a series of pipes. So we're still at 1.2 megapascal at 0.6. From 0.6 it flows into an open feed water heater and the open feed water heater is at a pressure of 0.6 megapascal and that's the pressure at which steam is being bled off at the intermediate point in the turbine. This is an open feed water heater. You can just think of it as a big mixing vessel. And as a result, the pressure at point at stream two flowing in is equal to the pressure at stream three flowing out. And that's equal to the pressure at seven and at ten. So we're at a pressure at seven of 0.6 megapascal. But at 0.6, we're at a higher pressure of 1.2. So we need a throttling valve here. And they draw it, I don't know why they draw it like this. You can just think of it as a, a valve on your, your faucet or what have you. This could just be a tiny orifice. But the idea is that you drop the pressure and do it isenthalpically. So if you work the energy balance on this and you make the adiabatic and, and the usual assumptions, you'll find that delta H is equal to zero across this throttling valve. And ultimately what you're being asked to find is the mass flow rate of steam through the boiler. So it flows through the boiler or the mass flow rate of the steam entering the turbine for a net power output of 400 megawatts. So uh, the shaft work coming out of here is 400 megawatts. And for part B you're asked to find the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So if you, part, uh, if you solve for part A, um, part B is relatively straightforward. The thermal efficiency is just 1 minus uh, Q out over Q in. Here's the TS diagram for this process. I won't uh, uh, draw it out for you because we covered it in class. But let's talk about, just to correspond, to make sure you understand uh, how this corresponds to this process. Let's start at point one, the entrance to the pipe, the pump. We flow through the pump through point two, entering the open feed water heater. So we're moving up. We've increased the pressure. We hit the open feed water heater and the fluid here, heat is being added to this stream as it flows through. So we're going through at an isobar in this case. We hit the second pump, pressure goes up at point 4, and the pressure is constant between 4 and 5 because this is a closed feed water heater. So we can have a different pressure in this line as we do in the fluid flowing vertically in here. So the fluid flows through, and the fluid doesn't know the difference if it's if heat is being added through the closed feed water heater or if, or if heat is being added through the boiler. So we continue between 4 and 5 and we're still on the same isobar, same pressure, and we'll flow in the same pressure of 10 megapascal at this point. So we flow through, as it flows through the heater, it the water is heated, all the water is boiled off, and it's superheated slightly at the point where it exits the boiler right here. So then we flow into the turbine and let's track through the outer loop in this case. It flows and it, we drop the pressure down to the lowest pressure in this case. So pressure of, I think I said, 0.1 um, in the problem statement, um, 0.6 megapascal. No, I'm sorry, 10 kilopascal in this case. So pressure P11 and P1 are equivalent as we flow through the turbine. So we've come from 0.8, we'll drop down to 0.11 if we follow that stream. So we've dropped down now to 10 kilopascal, flows through the condenser, and heat is being removed. It's a two-phase, it goes into the two-phase region. Heat is being drawn out of it, and we come back to the first point. If we follow it again, we follow the stream, and let's, let's track this loop. We follow it all the way around. We come to point 8, so we're back up here. And from 8, let's drop down to point, we can examine uh, this second bleed 
stream right here. So we'll drop down with a pressure of 0.6 megapascal again. So we drop down. At this point, it flows into the open feed water heater. So this is a steam coming off of the, being bled off the turbine, enters the open feed water heater, and we're dropping down. We're coming straight across at this point, and heat is being removed, and we end up back at 0.3 as these three these uh, three streams are mixed. And then we, if we follow the high pressure bleed coming off, we'll go from 8 to 9. So we'll drop down to this point, follow 9 around, and 9 will enter the closed feed water heater. So this is, as far as stream 9 is concerned, this might as well be a condenser. We're just pulling heat out of it. And we'll come to point 6. So we're established, we know that at the quality at the exit of this closed feed water heater is 0. So we'll come through, we need to drop the pressure again from 1.2 down to a, uh, the lower pressure, the intermediate pressure at the open feed water heater. So this is an isenthalp in a TS diagram. So isenthalps, they typically look like these sort of curves on a, a TS diagram. So we'll just follow this isenthalp between 6 and 0.7, and that lands us back in the open feed water heater. And from that point, we track from 7 to uh, to the left at 3, and then it enters the pipe. So this is how you correspond. The, the TS diagram relates to the flow diagram. So to start solving this problem, we know that the liquid, it's a saturated liquid leaving the condenser, and we know its pressure. So you know what H1 is. And we want to get from H1 to H2 across the pump. So we could do an energy balance around the pump itself. And at H2, H2 is equal to H1 plus the work of the pump in. It's an expression for H2. So what I recommend you do, we did an energy balance around the pump. Do energy balances around almost all of these to try to figure out well, what you know and what you're looking for. So in this case, we can get from 1 to 2 by an energy balance around the pump. So you'll need to do energy balances and material balances around all of these things. So ultimately, what you want to find is the mass flow rate of the steam for uh, per unit um, power coming out of the turbine. So let's do an energy balance around the turbine. I'll, I'll show you this as an example. So we know we want to look at how energy can get into and out of the turbine. Let's make the we'll make the adiabatic assumption heat can't get into or out of this highlighted circle. The only way uh, work or energy can get out is through work and through mass flowing crossing the boundary at these three streams, at these three bleed streams. The only way for energy to get into it is through stream 8. So let's write it real quick. We've got m dot, I'll do m dot 8 is equal to h8, and, or m, m dot h8 times h8 will equal the amount of enthalpy leaving through these street, three streams. So we've got, will equal m dot 9 plus m dot, the mass flow rate, the second bleed stream, multiplied by its enthalpy, plus m11, h11, plus the amount of work leaving. So all the energy entering equals the total uh, amount of energy leaving at steady state. Three other relationships you've got to work with are these three parameters, y, z, and the fraction of steam leaving the low pressure bleed. So let's write a relationship between streams 8 and 9, for example. So m dot 9 is equal to y times m dot 8. And m dot 10 is equal to z times m dot h. So y and z, the fraction of steam leaving the high pre pre pressure bleed and the low pressure bleed and the balance of it, the rest of it leaves as low pressure steam. So we've got m dot 11, in this case, is the balance of it. So 1 minus y minus z times m dot 8. So here's the energy balance around the turbine. Uh, I substituted in values. So this is written in fraction, uh, mass fractions being pulled off through the three streams. So if you can find H8, 9, and 10, and 11, you're given the work out. If you can find those variables, what we're looking for, if we can solve for it, if you know the fractions Y and Z, and I'll talk about those in a second, you're now at a point where you could solve what you really want to find for part A is this m dot h. So we'll talk, I'll talk about how to find these mass fractions here in a second. So what I'd recommend is, so we did a mass, uh, an energy balance around the turbine and also did a, a mass balance implicitly with these fractions. Let's do one around the closed feed water heater. So here we've got, if I use the grid lines, we've got 
the uh, closed feed water heater would draw a uh, box around here, and this is adiabatic. There's no heat crossing it. There's no work, obviously. All we've got is enthalpy flowing in from stream 9, leaving at 6, flowing in from 4, and leaving at 5. So I'll write that out here. So we've got, we've got the amount of enthalpy flowing in through 9, in through 4, and that's got to equal the amount leaving. So we've got m dot 5 h5 plus leaving at 6, m dot 6 h6. When, we do a, a, when you do a mass balance around this, it's important to recognize that all the mass flowing in through 4 has got to leave through 5. So m dot 4 has got to equal m dot 5. So these two are equal. And you can uh, make the same equality for streams 6 and 9. So I'll rewrite this in terms of that. So here we've got the mass flow rate at 9 is m dot, or the, uh, I just rewrote it. I made the substitutions. We have the difference between enthalpy at 9 and 6, and the same thing for m dot, um, the uh, horizontal stream between 4 and 5. So we can find this variable y. y is simply the fraction of uh, steam leaving at this high pressure. So y is equal to m dot 9 divided by m dot 8. So you look at it, the mass flow rate at 9 has got to be equal to m, the mass flow rate at 8 is the same as the mass flow rate at 5, so m dot 9 over m dot 5. And that's simply equal to the ratio of these two enthalpies. So I'll, re, I'll solve for this. We'll have h5 h5 minus h4 divided by h9 minus h6. I'll let you work this one out, but you can come up with the value z by doing an energy balance, a real similar energy balance, around the open feed water heater. So in this case you've got um, enthalpy coming in via stream 10, it's coming in via stream 7, and it's coming in via stream 2, and the only way it's leaving is through stream 3 in this case. And what you'll find is that you can relate the mass flow rate at 2 to the mass flow rate at 8 simply by using this, the remainder, the 1 minus y minus z. You can relate m dot 10 to m dot 8 again using z, and you can use tracking this line around m dot 7, it's the same as m dot 9, and you can relate that uh, to y between the two. And when you work this energy balance, you'll find that uh, the mass flow rate at 8 will actually drop out of the equation. So you'll have enthalpies at stream 7, 2, and 10, and stream 3, they're all related to uh, y and z. So if you know y at this point, you can solve, you can solve for z. So do your best at this one. They're long problems, but the key to them is to know how to um, work with uh, different energy and mass balances and recognize these different relationships, how the pressures and the temperatures relate to one another throughout this process. So remember, we've got through a turbine, we're going to say this is an ideal turbine. So the entropy at stream 9, 10, and 11 has got to be equal to the entropy at stream 8. Eventually, you'll get to a point where you can find Q in the heat being added to the boiler and Q out leaving the condenser. And at, at this point, when you get to this point, you can do an overall energy balance on the system. And you'll find that Q in has got to equal the rate at which energy is entering has got to equal the rate at which energy is leaving uh, work out plus Q out. So really just remember your small energy balances and this overall energy balance. And you can find Q in, for example, is uh, in m dot uh, times delta H in this case. So the enthalpy at stream 8 uh, minus the enthalpy at stream 5. So you can relate that to the mass flow rate and you can relate this on a specific basis where we've got capital Q in is equal to m dot h for example times uh, let's see h8 minus h5 and little q is simply um, this capital Q divided by the mass flow rate so you can still find on a specific basis little q um, is equal to h8 minus h5 so you've got Q in at this point on a specific basis, and then this is the work coming out, joules per kilogram of steam flowing through. So this is a lowercase w. So make these relationships. You should be able to tie it all together with a, a number of mass and energy balances.